Deacon Kendra. You all know Deacon Kendra. I regularly plagiarize his work. Uh, <laughs> we were just talking about uh, our homilies either for tomorrow or next week for All Saints Day, and uh, he should not be surprised to find that something he said this morning or is on the Deacon's bench, which is his uh, website on Patheos. Uh, so if you want to go there, but don't go till Monday. So then you can say, oh yeah, my girl used that on Sunday. So, uh, but it's a good thing because he's very talented and gifted. So we go back and forth. And in a way, that's why we're here this morning. We should be cooperating with one another to do our best to bring the message to our people, regardless of whether it concerns bullying or even just the expression of the gospel message. So it's very good to have Deacon with us. Those of you who are Eucharistic ministers or... Um, uh, lectors here uh, might remember him, I guess, from about a year ago. Yeah, maybe about a year ago. He spoke to uh, the assembly, the ministerial uh, uh, people here in our parish, and was, as always, very good. So I give you Deacon Greg Kendra, my lady Queen of Mars. Thank you, Monsignor, for those warm words and uh, that very generous welcome. And I bring you greetings from the other side of Forest Hills, <laughs> over by the boulevard. Last August, on a hot summer day, a 15-year-old boy in Bay Village, Ohio, was approached by some other boys who asked him to take part in the Ice Bucket Challenge. A lot of you remember that from last summer. It swept the country of an effort to uh, raise money for ALS research. The boy had autism and was somewhat isolated. He didn't have a lot of friends, and so he quickly agreed. He thought this would be something fun and a great way to meet people. He didn't have a clue what was about to happen. At the appropriate time, he met the boys outside his garage where he lived. He was wearing a bathing suit. They had rigged the ice bucket or a big plastic bucket above his head. And somebody pulled out a cell phone so that they could record this moment and put it online. And at the appropriate moment, they dropped the contents of the bucket on the boy. Well, the bucket didn't contain ice water. It contained urine and feces and trash. The boy was humiliated and sickened. And he ran home in tears. His mother alerted the authorities, but just a few hours later, the people who shot that video put it online in a further effort to embarrass him. The next day, the boy's older brother was interviewed by a local TV station, and he was horrified. He said, the first thing that popped into my mind is, why would someone do this? How could someone be this cruel? If you are looking for evidence at how horrific and how brutal and how evil bullying can be, I would offer that as Exhibit A. This is what we have become. Bullying has worked its way into our national conversation. In fact, the American Psychological Association even has an official definition. Bullying, they say, is a form of aggressive behavior in which someone intentionally and repeatedly causes another person injury or discomfort. Bullying can take the form of physical contact, words, or more subtle actions. The bullied individual typically has trouble defending him or herself and does nothing to cause the bullying. I think we're all aware it can take many forms, from name-calling, taunting, mockery, cyberbullying on the internet, even physical abuse, as with the boy in the ice bucket challenge. Too often, parents and teachers, and I think even students, don't take it seriously enough. They think of bullying as something that you have to go through or get through and something that happens to everybody. But to think that way is to misjudge and even to minimalize what is, in fact, a national crisis. In 2011, a White House conference on bullying offered these statistics. One-third 
of middle school and high school students, one out of three, have reported being bullied during the school year. Almost three million students have said they were pushed, shoved, tripped, or spit on. It's also more likely to affect kids who are seen as different, whether it's because of the color of their skin, the clothes they wear, a disability they have, or sexual orientation. Bullying leads to poor performance in school and even increased absence from school. Significantly, it can even lead to suicide. According to the CDC, suicide due to bullying is the third largest cause of death among young people. Bullying is more than a phase. It is more than an inconvenience, more than merely a problem. Bullying is a matter of life and death. When Dean first approached me and Monsignor McGurl about hosting this event, we talked about what would be the best time to do it, and we agreed that maybe in the fall, after kids are going back to school, would be ideal. By coincidence, though, October is Bullying Awareness Month. And perhaps even more significantly for us Catholics, the bishops have declared October Respect Life Month. To me, this is a life issue. How can we call ourselves Catholics? How can we believe in the gospel, believe in the resurrection, and respect life without addressing this issue and seeking to bring it to an end? Bullying crushes the spirit and it scars the soul. It attacks the vulnerable and it legitimizes hate. It is an issue especially close to every believing Christian and for this reason. When we gaze at the cross, we look into the face of a man who was beaten and ridiculed and mocked. We see the pain of a man who was denied and betrayed and abandoned by his friends. Our God knows what it is like to see his son abused and scorned. He knows what it is like to be bullied. There's a story about Mother Teresa. Whenever anyone would approach her with some advice or ask her for some words of wisdom, wanting to be more holy, she made it very simple. She would take someone's hand and count off the five fingers. She said, the gospel is in your hand. You did this to me. Whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. The gospel is always with you, she would say. Whenever you look at your hand, remember that. You did this to me. How do we care for the least of these? That is the measure of our lives as Christians. So very often, the victims of bullying are the least of these. They are the smallest, the quietest, the most vulnerable, sometimes the weakest. They trust in a world that is so often untrustworthy, and they suffer like that boy in Ohio for being different and sensitive and vulnerable. But our call as Catholic Christians is to protect and defend the least of these, but also to give dignity to all human life. If we don't cherish and honor and respect those who have been born, we won't do it for the unborn. What do we stand for if we don't stand for this simple fact that we respect life? Every life has worth and every person is made in the image and likeness of God. When that story in Ohio first made the news, Drew Carey, who grew up in Ohio, came forward and he offered a $10,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of the boys responsible. Well, just two weeks ago, a full two months after this event, police arrested five teenagers. They were charged with disorderly conduct, delinquency, and assault. They were all between the ages of 14 and 16. 
The prosecutor in Ohio says they realize that they crossed a line and they have expressed regret for what happened. Well, part of our mission here today is to prevent something like that from happening here, to raise awareness and to change in some small way the conversation about bullying, to take a stand and very simply, very basically, to respect life. You're going to hear more in a moment from Dean and from several other people who are going to give advice, insight, offer some answers to questions that you may have about this issue. All of us who are here this morning have a stake in this. These are our children. They need to know that they are loved and supported. And that they need to know also that God is on their side. Because every time we look at the cross, we are looking at the ultimate victim of bullying. The great Protestant preacher Rick Warren who wrote The Purpose Driven Life, once wrote about Mother Teresa, and he put it so beautifully. He said, the more you care about the powerless, the more power you have. The more you serve those with no influence, the more influence God will give you. My prayer this morning as we go forward is that we seize this opportunity to give power to the powerless, to give hope to the hopeless, to show mercy to those who feel that the world is merciless, and that those who have spent too long cowering in fear in the dark will finally come to know light. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Deacon Greg Kendra. Thank you, my senior, for your prayer and the whole team. I'm going to bring up now, excuse me, my throat's a little warm because I've been speaking a lot, so I'm going to go away from the mic. I'm going to bring up now Unique Mendez. She's going to sing a song. She's going to sing two songs, but she's going to sing one song right now. She's a very talented young lady. She has been bullied herself, and you'll hear a little about her in a couple of minutes, but I want her to sing her nice song that she prepared, and uh, we're very proud of her. And Unique is one of my students. I teach martial arts. She's been with me for many years. She was bullied at the age of 13. She is now 16 years old. So, Unique. This song is called Price Tag. It's not an original, but it's something to make you guys remember, make people remember, that it's the little things in life that we should worry about like happiness instead of money and always thinking about other things. <laughs>
before I start, I want to thank everybody for coming today. And um, we're going to continue doing these. But I want to thank Alan and Mercy for letting me host this here. Thank you to the staff, Sue Carter, Monsignor, everybody who is at LAD Mercy. And I'm going to ask a couple of questions. But at the end, we're going to do like a little raffle. I have one of my books. I just published a book called Stop Bullying Today. That's been out since August. This is my third book I published. And also, I have two envelopes for two other winners. And this is free karate lessons for adults, children, teens for one year. Okay? So I believe in giving back to communities. For the people who don't know me, my name is Dean Dobbins. I've been in law enforcement for many years. I'm no longer a police officer. I'm a consultant, and I consult around information technology. And what I do with that is, I work around forensics. There are many, many teens, adults, children bullied on the internet, and I'll speak about that. Deacon Gray did a very, very good job of presenting what bullying is about. And I'm gonna bring it down to the street level. I'll give you some statistics. I'll add what Dean Gray had to say. And listening to Unique's song, she had something called bling bling, that means jewelry, or the ding ding money. You don't have to be money, you don't have to have money to be a good person. Because we are all evil. And I always say that. I said, you know, how do I start my presentation today? And I wrote a lot of stuff down. And then I said to myself, I have the best story to tell at the beginning. It was from a movie. So for the youngsters here, you ever see the Karate Kid? Oh, yeah. Right? As adults, we saw it in 1984, right? Ralph Macchio, my day. Movie. And then you saw it with uh, Jaden Smith. I saw both. She saw both. And here, we're going to interact, because I like to interact. And my voice, I've been speaking all week, it's been made to get to us. But think of the beginning of the Karate Kid. Ralph Macchio, Daniel LaRusso, that's his character name. Right? He lives in New Jersey. His parent, mom, his father, we don't know what happened to his father, but his mom decided to move to give him a better life from New Jersey to Trenton. If you remember the beginning of the movie. And Daniel was very reluctant to move because he had all his friends, his cousins, his family around him. He was secure, very secure. So his mom, say again? That's right. In one movie, he moved to China. In the movie on Sweet Night, he moves to California. They get in their station wagon and they drive all those miles, seven days to get to California. I don't think I could do that trip. But he did with his mom. He comes to a new home, which was in a middle class area. He meets some guys, some boys, some girls. They're at a beach party. Now, what happens at that beach party if we remember the movie? He sees a girl he likes. He just wants to fit in. He wants to be a person that fits in. All of a sudden, he's playing soccer on the beach. He meets the girl, they have some romantic music going on. And all, all, all of a sudden, who comes? Johnny, okay? And in the Karate Kid, the new version, it was a, another boy, I don't know his name. But Johnny sees Daniel with his ex-girlfriend. And Johnny was the bully. And Johnny wanted to have control over his girlfriend and many others. The next scene opens up. Daniel Russo already got Beat up on the beach, as we know. Got a black eye. And the next scene, he wakes up, and he's going to go to school. But he fears going to school that day. A new school, new friends, new environment. And what is the first thing that happens to him again? He gets beat up again. In my day, in the 1970s, when I was brought up in the 80s, we didn't call it bully. That word really wasn't around. Okay? I know, I found something very interesting on the internet. I was telling Deacon Greg yesterday. The word bully in Dutch, you know what it means? Love and friendship. But the bully word here means hatred. Fear. People, hatred and fear. Torment. So, I don't want to continue on the movie. I just wanted to open it up of how he tried to fit in. If I ask for a raise of hands, you can raise your hand if you want to, you don't have to. But how many people here, in one point of their life, have been harassed or bullied? 
Now I have to tell you, I came from a very, very loving family, large Italian family. We're small now. And I remember those Sunday dinners, you know, those Sunday dinners when grandpa had to sit at three o'clock and you cannot eat. And I was nurtured. My mother always nurtured me. My father died when I was a very young boy, and my mother remarried, but my mother, she's here today, she was my support system. She was my mom, she was my dad, she was my advisor, she was my mentor. And there was one thing that she wanted. She always wanted to keep me safe. She wanted to keep her son safe, and she always taught me something, and in the book I dedicated to her. She said to me, treat people the way you want to be treated. Respect others the way you want to be respected. And it always stayed in my mind to this day. And I think that's why I developed as a man of a person who likes to give back. I consider myself a very humble person. Many people out there might say I'm not, but I do. And there's a reason why I say that. Being humble is a way to go on the right path. When I was 12 years old, I was in an elementary school. And like the Karate Kid, I was bullied. In our day again, I call it a fight. But the boy, I'm five foot seven and a half now. I haven't grown since, right? The boy had to be almost six foot. He saw me as a target. The target he saw was a prey. And I always use that little analogy. You know how we have that beautiful lamb? We go to the farms and zoos, we pet that, right kids, right? For that little lamb? Well, say that poor little lamb was in the desert. What do we have in deserts? Sand or what else? We have something called a wolf, right? But wolves attack in packs, just like bullies. My bully had his friends around him. They edged him on. I was playing football. That's all I wanted to do with my friends. And that's how my book starts out. I was playing football just with my friends. I wanted to have a good time. I always played football. I like sports, and I love my friends. I have great friends. Well, this one bully, when I was 12, kept coming and coming and tormenting me. And I kept going home, Mom, Dad, what do I do? What do I do? And my stepfather, he was a real tough tank. He said, to me, you have to stand up for your life. You have to stand up for your rights. But I feared fighting this boy because he was bigger than me. Well, one day, he took my football. I tried to defend myself. He knocked me down, kicked me in my ear. To this day, I have some hearing loss. Then I ran home. But you know what my friends did when I got knocked down? They did not help. They ran away. Out of fear, they ran away. Are those friends? At the point, I didn't consider them friends anymore. Now I have to confront something. He went to my school. I had to go to school that day. The next day after it happened. What do I do now? For months, coming back. He never robbed my money, but bullies will take your money if they could. They could push me. The lockers, the bathrooms. And finally, my mom said, you need to learn how to defend yourself. And that's how I became a martial artist at the age of 12. I'm going to be 52 in January. I have not stopped. My story is not really about me, but I want to give you an intro of what I went through and what others go through. There's so many statistics. 160 teens and children get bullied every single day and every single minute. 4,700 teens commit suicide every single year due to not speaking to somebody. I spoke at a school yesterday, and a young boy actually said to me, can we help bullies? And I said, absolutely, we can help bullies. I said to him also, you guys have to be a support system for each other. And he did an exercise with them. I'm not going to do it today. I made them all get up. And I said, look to your left, look to your right. Look in front of you, look behind you. If you see somebody you don't know, get to know them. Even as adults, we have a beautiful parish. We have a lot of parishioners, but I bet you that I don't know everybody, and I bet you people here don't know everybody in the pews. And we need to all get together and know who we are. There's a reason for that, because we have to make this country a better place. 
We have so much hatred, crime, bullying, harassment, too much harassment out there. If you bump into somebody, don't know what they have in their pocketbook or their handbag or their knapsack, right? I take the subway a lot and I always watch my surroundings. I have to. As an adult, I walk away from things. But something happened to me six months ago that I could not walk away from. And one of my classmates, Bill Malaysia, he knows the story. I was taking the E-train, minding my own business, standing just for one stop, 53rd, to go to 23rd in Long Island City where my car was parked. Minding my own business. And two men were there with a young lady. I thought they were teenagers. They looked like teenagers. The guy looked at me, and he said some curse words, which I'm not going to repeat. They called me four eyes. You know, I'm proud of my classes. They called me four eyes. And what's the next thing he did? I looked at him, I said, you're speaking to me? Yeah, I'm speaking to you, blankety blank blank. And I was shocked. He threw a punch at me. I've been trained in the martial arts for over 40 years. I know how to defend myself. Did I want to defend myself? Did I want to hit him out of anger? I defended myself. I can tell you I hit him hard enough, well enough to forget it. But I didn't know these things work in subways. Anybody know that? He's working subways. So it was a fight on the train, I'm defending myself. So I called the police. I get pulled off. As soon as the next time, I get pulled off and they got pulled off. To find out they were 25 and 26 years old. They weren't children. But they looked at me as a target, a prey, that wolf, and they wanted to take advantage of somebody. And I have to say it was the wrong day for them. Because I tell you, that guy's going to remember. But I felt bad. Because I was taught always to defend that thing. And I teach my students the same thing. You have to walk away from it. The couple of minutes I'm going to put up a couple of slides just to go over the root of bullying. And think about something. And if you want to interact, that's fine. We're going to speak about what is a bully? Why do we have bullies? Where did it come from? A bully's big, a bully's short, tall, a bully's rich, a bully's poor. See, people say, ah, bullies come from broken families. That's not true. Bullies come from all walks of life. We have a lot of adults here. If you work, think about, have you ever been bullied in the workplace? In the workplace, it happens. I do a lot of consulting, and it happened to me. And it, where it happened was my superior. He was very annoyed at something that we were supposed to do, but we weren't prepared. And he started cursing all of us. And then he said something. He said about my faith. And he was another Catholic. But he said about my faith. I took it very personal. I need to memorize. He said, you need to memorize this speech like you do the rosary. And I was very appalled at that. And I saw that as harassment. I didn't see him physical bullying, but verbally he was cursing us. See, nobody has the right to curse anybody here. If you know them or not. Children curse. Teens curse, of course. Adults, we say things. But we have to remember, whoever you're speaking to, you don't know their life. You don't know what they have done in life. You don't know if they've been bullied. You don't know if they are bullied, if they are bullies. So when that happened in the workplace, I said, what do I do? Do I bring it to my big boss's attention? And I remember when I took the job, there's something called human resources. And I went to the human resource department to find out that that gentleman didn't just do it to me, he did it to many others, and he got fired on the spot. So we have rights, especially in the workplace. So I bring that up for adults here. We have rights. Also, we have to respect each other. Again, like I said, I came from a very nurturing, warm family. I would never, ever, ever open my mouth to my mom. To this day, we're best of friends. We can speak about anything. And we have common respect for each other. I'm just picking on you today, mom. I okay, I'm allowed to, right? I teach martial arts one day a week. I used to teach it almost seven days a week. I have 150 students right now. I treat each student with the utmost respect. I never cross the line. I help them, I coach them, I mentor them because I want them to be better students. 
that the kids can grow up the right way. I always say there's two doors. We have a lot of exits here, but there's door A and door B. Door A, you're gonna go to school, guys, for the students here. They're gonna go to school, get a good education, and be good kids. And then you're gonna go to college, and hopefully you get a good job, profession, whatever it is. Right? And then there's door B. See the bullies? They follow a path, and it's not for goodness, it's for the worst. And I always say to kids when I speak to them, if you are a bully, we can help you change. We need to help you change. Okay? And if you can't change, you're going to help others. What I've done with schools now, I speak to a lot of schools all over the country. Last week it was one of those weeks. I was upstate, Pennsylvania, yesterday St. Margaret's, today here, I've been all over. But I have to tell you something. Kids want to help. Especially when there's a bully, but they're afraid. They don't know what to do. Because they don't want to be bullied. So you youngsters have to take a stand. And what we've been doing in the public school system, which has been working, when you have a PTA group, now we have anti-bullying groups or harassment groups. So when somebody is having trouble, they can go to somebody, a support system. We definitely need support systems out there. We do it for kids, we do it for teens, Seniors. Seniors get bullied. You know that? They get beat up, they get pushed. Shame, huh? Somebody wants to rob their pocketbook and take their money. Well, that's harassment, that's violence, but that's bullying somebody that cannot defend themselves. I remember seeing that specific YouTube video that Deacon Drake was speaking about before. I was shocked, totally shocked. I got a cringe. And I said, if I could be in a room with five of those guys who did it, I would teach them a lesson. I would teach them a lesson how to respect somebody, how to help that person. You see, when a person is bullied, it takes a long time for the healing process. It took me a long time, all the way through high school. And my parents always say, it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better. There was times I did not want, especially in high school, I went to Jamaica High School, it was a tough school back then. There was times I did not want to go to school. I would literally cut until my mother finally got the letters that I was not in school. And she said, why? And guess what? She found out the real reason. Because I held it in. Now, did the martial arts help me? Oh yeah, it did help me a lot. Because it brought my self-esteem back up. It taught me how to respect myself. And it taught me how to have the courage to stand up to that last bullet. I'm not gonna ruin the ending of the book. But it's a good ending. What I'm going to do now, just uh, Bill, maybe you can help me. Just could do up and down on my um, laptop. I just want to show you some statistics, some keywords. We're going to talk about keywords. We're going to make it interactive. Then we'll take a little break. We may do some Q and A. A couple more songs. Okay. So Deacon Greg actually probably went through this whole whole PowerPoint put together. But if you look at it, right. Various bullying behaviors, right? Who are bullies? How do children deal with bullies? Steps for adults to address bullies. How does an adult address a bully? Anybody? Anybody want to give a shot, Tom? You're here. Want to give a shot? How does an adult, a parent, address a bully if that child is bullied? I'm putting you on the spot. I think uh, you got to start out with uh, what you have in common, uh, son. If it's a uh, boy, uh, you know, you know how much I love you. But I'm a little worried about you. Uh, worried about me? Well, yeah, because and then go into the uh, uh, the activity, the, uh, the behavior, which is uh, obviously not good for the victim or for the bully. Well said. What is bullying, right? Let me pick on the youngsters here. Who wants to tell me what is bullying? Okay. What's your name? Hunter. Hunter, do you go to school here? Good. Uh, what grade are you in? What grade are you guys in? Third grade. Third grade. Okay, good. Good. Go ahead, Hunter. Tell me, what is bullying? What do you think bullying is about? Bullying is about following people, pushing people, and stealing. 
pushing, stealing. You know why bullies bully us? They're jealous sometimes of what we have or we don't have, right? You know what? Well, go ahead. You can keep going. I like your gloves. <laughs> what is a bully? A bully to me, like I said, is a predator. Wants something that I have. Bullies also are jealous. They're jealous of what people have. Say a bully doesn't have what, maybe they don't have a watch that I have. Maybe they want that. Go ahead, young man. A bully is someone who mistreats anyone who's not like them. Anything else? And who, and who hurts people who can't defend themselves. That's right. Think about you're in school, right? And there's a kid sitting behind you, and all he does all day is kick you. Is he bullying you? Yes. But he's harassing you, he's bothering you, because he wants you to turn around, either fight him, or if you're too afraid, you're gonna just sit there, right? I always see people walk away from a bully. You know when a bully starts laughing or makes a joke about somebody, big, skinny, fat, whatever, right, and kids join in, don't laugh about it with them. He just wants you to join in. See, bullies want you to join in all the time. So you have to take a stand. Go ahead, sir. It makes some of bullying um, gets done by boys. What about girls? And I was going to get into that. Because somebody asked me, do boys get bullied more than girls, or do girls get bullied more than boys? Okay, um, go, go to the slide on cyberbullying, because this is going to give you your answer. Um, keep going, right there, you can stop there. Girls are bullied more than boys when it comes to cyberbullying, internet, these things, phones. That's a statistic. But I always tell people, watch what you say on these things, there's a reason. Everything you write, adults, children, teens, everything you write is being recorded. Everything. If you delete it, you think it's deleted, it's not. So I always tell teenagers, watch what you say. And Unique is going to speak in a little while, but when she was bullied, I read certain things that this young man said to her. I'm not going to call him a young man, but he's a boy. He was a bad bully. And I told my mom, don't worry about it, it's being recorded, even if we don't have it. Also, every phone that has been made in the last five years has a tracking device. So now we can track the person down. See, technology is out there. But girls, for some statistic reason, are bullied more than boys on the internet. Boys are bullied more physical. These are statistics. So, I hope I answered your question, but the girls are really bullied more on that cyber side, and boys physical. But I've seen girls bully other girls. I've seen girls bully boys, and I've seen boys bully girls. And I've seen adults, male and female, bully each other. And I call it harassment. But I always tell people, when you continue to do something in that, in that pattern, you will get in trouble. And we have the right to go to the authorities. You see, one little boy said to me yesterday, if I go to my teacher, am I a rat? Am I a tattletale? I said, tattle and rat anytime you want. I say, it's okay. And he looked at me, really? I said, yes. Tell, go to your teacher. First place is the teacher. When you get home, you need to go to your parents. And don't hold it in. As adults, who do we go to? I'll go to my wife, and she'll take care of it. Very fast. <laughs> but, I try to put some humor in it, but, again, we all need to take a stand. There are so many youngsters, third grade, fourth, fifth, sixth, even in high school, kids that have been bullied, and they're writing great songs about it, they're singing about it, they have rallies. Adults too, we all get involved. We need to get involved, we need to help each other. Okay, next slide, Bill. So we're still on cyberbullying. I'll just read the first one. Cyberbullying was experienced at least one time by 43% of teens 
the age of 13 to 17. Do you know that there is 25% of teenagers admit they are bullies? 25% is small. But they admit they're bullies and they don't help anybody. The statistics might have grown already since that. Next slide, please. They spoke about before. Children who are bullies, they come from any ethnic, cultural, or religious background. So it could happen anywhere. It says most bullying with children happen in middle school to high school. Again, we try to nurture our children, keep them safe. It's our educators, when we're not there, they need to take care of our children every single day. I just spoke at a school that my photographer's children go to. This is my friend Tony, great guy, great photographer. So I'm plugging him a little bit. But I spoke in front of their PTA, and then I spoke in front of the children. And I asked the question I asked before, how many people here have been bullied? Children. 75% of the kids raised their hands. I said, are there any bullies here? Five came forward. I spoke to the five children afterwards, and they told me the reason why they were being, why they're bullies, because they were bullied, and they had all this anger and rage inside. And I'm not a counselor, I'm just a consultant. I consider myself a consultant with my foundation stop bullying today, and I told them to speak to the guidance counselor, speak to the vice principal, go to the principal, and try to work these issues out, go to the parents, seek the help, because bullies need to really be helped. Okay, so one more slide. I have 25 slides. I just wanted to put up a few that, you know, behaviors. Children who bully want the power, right? Attitude towards violence. Bullies are very violent. I, yesterday, and maybe Dean Gray can jump in, but yesterday something happened in Seattle, right? Seattle, Washington. And we saw it all over the news. This was in a high school. But listening to it, and listening to the police officer who was explaining it, I don't, really, I don't know if it was a boy or a girl, because I didn't get the whole story, but there was a confrontation between two of them. And that person said, I will be back tomorrow with a gun, and I will kill you. You see, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we used our hands in a fight. Now, unfortunately, like I said before, Knives, guns, bats, whatever they use. And it's sad that we have to live like this. But we have to take control of our communities and we have to make them safe. So yesterday when I was reading this online, it bothered me. Because it wasn't just that situation in Seattle. There was three others, California, another one in Florida. I mean, every day you're hearing this. Children bullying children, teens bullying teens, shootings, violence. How do we stop it? Well, this community here in Forest Hills, if we all came together, once at a time, I think we can stop this. But we need to educate others. So, if we're 20, 30 people here today, we need to speak to other people who work here today and explain what Dean Greg said, myself, my senior, the beautiful song you need played and what she's gonna to speak to you about in a couple of minutes. Well, my slide will go a couple down. Yeah, if you're down. Keep going. Keep going. I think you're going back up. Yeah, I'm sorry to turn it back. It's okay. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Keep going. One more. The negative impacts of witnessing bullying, and then we're going to stop here on our break. Like I said before in my book, and what happened to me, I got hit, I got knocked down, and my friends ran away. They didn't do anything. They said, oh, I fear this bully, I'm leaving. And it was sad to see my close friends, since I was five years old, run away from me. So if you ever see one of your friends in trouble, my three and fourth, um, you guys are third grade, how old are you? 11. If you ever see a friend in trouble, a friend in need, what are you going to do? That's right, you're going to help them. You know why you're going to help them? Because you're a better person, and you're going to help them against the people who are trying to hurt them. Okay? And help them, don't get hurt. Break it up. 
stop it. We have to stop that. So we're going to take a break. Thank you for listening to me. And we'll come back in about 10 minutes. Thank you. There's plenty of coffee. My mother baked all night, so please eat coffee. Actually, it's from Shop and Stop. He's going to give you a card. And the reason why I'm getting rid of these cards is because my printer is still the word wrong, so I might as well use them. Uh, there's going to be a number on the card. And this is for the Give It to All the Adults Fund, because this book is for this book is for 7th grade and up. Okay. Are you in 7th grade? No. What grade are you in? 6th grade, okay, because there's a lot of hard words in here, so... Uh, but for the kids, what we'll do is... We'll do the free karate lessons, okay? How's that sound? Alright? we got to pick some numbers. So, um... Miss Jeannie, yes. the numbers that the children pick, could you just basically keep them in your head and call children? Okay. Yeah, just keep, because they're going to get something else. So I should give them this? You, yes, don't give them that right now. Okay. And you need to look at the numbers, and we'll pick a number out of those, okay? We'll do that fair. Dean, can I be in it? But you have my book. Oh, yeah, I took the book, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was just for karate. In karate, you could come anytime you want. I, I did teach the kids. Thank you. I, I actually run a free nonprofit martial arts program in Fresh Meadows. And this is what this is for. Um, like I said, we have about 150 students. And we have classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturdays. For adults, we have cardio kickboxing. The instructors teaching that. For the big guys that want to do the rough and tough karate, we have a Thursday night class. My partner Don Boyd was here in Middle Village. He comes down. And then for the kids, and it really just brings their awareness up. Like I said, it helps them a lot. I had students that their grades, and I didn't mention about grades, but I had students that grades were really, really poor. To find out they were bullied, number one and they weren't going to school, similar to what I did, and then I had to go back to school, because I have a tough mom, so I had to go back to school. Okay. Uh, now, are we doing good on the, on the cards? Very good. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Am I getting good pay for this, or what? <laughs> you know, I'm going to treat you like a queen, and we're going to go to Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you're going to over there. <laughs> you like that thinking, Greg? <laughs> I've only got started. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked my mother about a couple weeks ago. I said, Ma, when you were my mother was brought up in the fifties, so if anybody was brought up in the fifties, you know, I said, when at school when you would see a fight or something, what they call it back that back then? And she goes, uh, they called it uh, going for blows, like knocking each other out. But it was. Uh, and actually, I'll, I'll tell a quick story, and then we'll continue. Uh, about my dad, my deceased dad. He met my mom in, and hopefully the story sticks, he met my mom in junior high school now? High school. High school. Jermaine High School. So I went to the same high school as my mom, different times, of course, as we know. And my mom and dad met, like everybody else meeting their loved one. And some guys were jealous of my dad dating my mom. I guess somebody liked my mom. The story is the correct story because that's okay, it's a good story. But it's a, this, this part is the truth of the story. My father was beat up by five guys, mom? Why six guys? put in the hospital. This is in high school. Now, is it over you or somebody else? Whatever the case may be, whatever the case may be, this is back in the, in, the, in the late 50s, right? Early 60s, 50s. But could you imagine that? My father, all he wanted to do was find love. Right, as we know, I'm here, right? But he got picked up with five guys, put in the hospital. And I posted something about eight months. I have my Facebook page, and I only and I didn't talk about social media, but I'll talk about it now. I use social media for one reason, one reason only: to promote Stop Bullying Today and to promote my fan page, because I do a lot of different things. Um, so outside authoring books. 
and I was inspired by my brother-in-law because he wrote like nine books. So he said, why don't you write a book? Why don't you write a story about maybe yourself and somebody else about being bullied? So I wrote Stop Bullying Today. And from my book, I called the tour, and I'm not, I'm not a famous author, I'm just a regular guy, I got introduced to a lot of good people. And now we are our cameraman, which he's probably listening right now through the headset, they produced, his production company, produced my documentary movie called Stop Bullying Today, and hopefully, once we're done editing, <laughs> we will put it out there. And we are doing a film screening in the city once it's ready. But I think we're on to something really good for communities to watch this. And I really hope, uh, if anybody is here from the diocese, we can get it in, maybe on the net or something, because this piece will be aired. But the idea of the documentary, I said, whose story is it going to be about? It's not all about me, 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 me. I want others. So I brought in five children. We brought them to the studio in the city. And they told their stories a lot. What happened to them? Then Unique is in our documentary. She's one of the teens that got bullied. And she told her story. But then they said, but it's not all about children either. What about adults? And we found a bully. She came forward and told her story. And it was very, very compelling, the story. We had law enforcement speaking. We had two educators, um, both from Catholic schools, and one, three, and then one from public school system. We had a martial artist, not myself, speak about his life and what happened to him, why he took the martial arts and karate. And I put this together because I wanted to get it out there to the communities to understand this documentary I did can help people. So that's something else I did. From that, I've been interviewed, and that's why I lost my voice, almost every single day of the week in the last month. And Bill and I are very close, and I tell all my progress and success what I'm doing. And I was on TV four times last week, which one aired this morning, which I missed. I missed it. So hopefully it's somewhere on YouTube so I can watch it. But I tell the same story. How do we slow it down? How do we help people? Why did I write the book? And, you know, they always say, never let anybody steal your dreams. And I'm going to tell you why I'm saying this. Because I was brought up from my parents saying, never let anybody steal your dreams. And here's an adult who's an actor. I know him very well. He's been in, in Rockstale, Goodfellows, a couple other movies. I did some extra work when I was younger. And in my 30s, and like I said, I'm almost 50, so I'll continue doing a little extra work. I don't want to be a superstar, but I like to be getting in front of the camera. I like it. I enjoy it. It's a passion to me. And I spoke to this one actor, and I said to him, I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll call his name Clem. That's his real name. I said, Clem, you know, I write books. He went, you can't write books. I said, okay. I said, you know, I want to produce a documentary movie. You can't be a producer or director. I'm a director. I'm a movie star. Okay. I said to him, you know what? I would like to pursue my acting career again. You're not an actor. You can never be an actor. Well, guess what? I didn't write one book, I wrote three. As I told you, I produced a documentary movie, and I just completed Show Me a Hero. And the movie set was in Yonkers on site, and if you remember back in 1987, if you can remember this, in 1987 in Yonkers, they built a very low income housing project in a beautiful upper class, middle area. And it was a lot of turmoil, a lot of racism, a lot of everything. So my little scene with three lines, I'm confronting the mayor, who was a crooked mayor at the time. And you can read him on the internet, but it's called Show Me Hero. It's on HBO. It's already out there. So I'm in season two. And I'm excited. Uh, I hope I did well. But to show you guys that my dreams, I have dreams too, like everybody else, and goals, they're coming true slowly. But this gentleman bullied me. Can we use the word bully? He was jealous, that's what he was. Because he said to himself, I'm famous, you can't be famous, I'm the famous guy. And the sad part about it, he runs the Jimmy Whispers Knocking Out Bullying Foundation, and he's a bully. So I wrote him an email saying, I, don't know, I didn't appreciate what you said to me, number one. I didn't like the words that you said either. And hopefully you can read 
But I think we got it. And I said to him, you are a bully. And I just ended with this. Leave me alone. We're not friends. And I ended with that. I could have said other things. Just to show you how people are jealous. You see, if somebody wants something, they're going to try to take it. And I always tell the kids, don't let anybody take it. Follow your dreams. Follow your goals. Because they're important to you. Like my goals and dreams are important to me. So we're going to have Unique play another song. And then Unique's going to speak about her bullying incident. Maybe not in full detail, because I know it, it hurts her. But she's a great kid. I call her kid. Great team. She's very talented. Okay? And people are very jealous of her. So Unique, you want to go to now? Thank you. And then we will call, as Janique's getting up there, we're going to call for the book first, okay? So, um, Deacon Greg, I think there's maybe 20 cards out there, from number 1 to 20, could you pick a number in and call it out? No, you can pray on it if you want. <laughs> 12. Anybody have the number 12? Okay, Tom, you have, you get to, come on down, Tom. Come on. We have Sing. a winner? We have a winner. Alright. Okay. Thomas George, 1695. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay, now, do the kids have cards, Jeannie? No. Okay, let's do that. Well, you need to, you know, prepare. Me, 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 me. So, one of the children here will get karate lessons and then an adult. So, hold your cards. We're going to pick another number. Okay, so we're going to do the... Go ahead, by the while, you know, you can bring the kids. All right, Deacon Greg. One more number between 1 and 20. Seven. Who has number 7? Anybody? Number 7? We have 38. Oh, that's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, cards coming out. Okay, so we have high numbers. So, let's pick another number between 15 and 38. 21. Where's 21? Okay, great. Come on now. Come on. So you have, you have, the, you are getting free karate lessons for one year. My phone number is there. Call me. And if you're interested, we will have you come down, okay? Okay, great. And you can bring your son too. You can bring your whole family. It doesn't matter. I don't charge. Okay, now, the numbers, okay, are they low numbers that you gave out, Ma? Okay, so, so well, let me pick on somebody else. Uh, so, number one to seven. Pray on it, Sue. Pray on first one. Four. Four. Anybody got number four? Yeah! Uh, okay. Congratulations. Give me a handshake. Smile to the camera. There you go. Okay, now, for the people who didn't win, you're all welcome. You're all welcome. To get in touch with me, if you're interested in the martial arts, you can come to my neighborhood, Fresh Meadows. Okay, Paul knows where I live, right, Paul? So you can come down, you visit the studio, and it's good. It's good for health reasons, it's good for self awareness, it's good for the martial arts, it's good for everything. And you'll have a good time, too. Okay? So, and somebody said, well, how old do you need to be to take the martial arts? Well, we have students that are five years old to 80 years old. My mom trains with me. Because she works with kids, and she doesn't want to get kicked. <laughs> I know, my mom actually trained me for many, many years. So, I'm, I'm inviting anybody who's interested, my cards are in the back, and uh, Unique, and we'll answer your question now. You have a quick question? Um, you don't have to be a specific age to take martial arts. Not at all. You can take it at any age. Any age. You know, we, we have a saying in my karate studio, a black belt is a white belt that never quits. So we just start at white belt, and we become black belts eventually, right? So I never quit. And one of my students said to me, this is why I say I'm humble. He said to me, they call me Kiyoshi, that means head instructor. He said, Kiyoshi, if I ask you to wear a white belt, would you do it? I said, absolutely. I'll still teach, because it's not the color, it's the spirit inside, okay? You need, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, uh, do you need the mic to introduce the song, or you could just yell it out? Okay, because um, I'm excited to hear this one, because I haven't heard this one. No, this one is definitely a new one. 
I just finished writing it. Um, it's called Reach Up to the Sky. So it has a little bit of a ballad and then it gets into rap. I was trying to get to, you know, the younger kids, so I hope you guys enjoy it. watch over your children. You have to make sure that everything in your household is straight. For us children, it's more on an intellectual level. We fight to fit in. We fight to be popular. We, some of us fight to make our parents happy. We want to make our parents happy. We want to do good in school, right? We want to do good in school. Yes. We want to play sports. Yes. We want to have a lot of friends. Yes. We want to Beat the high score on a video game. Yes. I know I do. But what happens when other children don't see you like that? What if what if you go from one day, and I'm talking about personal experience now, what if one day you're president of the school, cheerleading captain, you have a whole bunch of friends, you go from being popular one day and then the next day, nobody likes you. Nobody wants to talk to you. You're isolated. At lunchtime, nobody wants to sit with you. In gym time, you're picked last. In the schoolyard, you're left to sit in a corner. In a corner like this by yourself. 
because there's people in that corner that you can see that are making it obvious that they're talking about you, laughing at you, pointing at you, calling you names. In class, people that ask you for help don't want to touch you. And for a reason that you couldn't have prevented. It wasn't something like you had an issue with another child. It wasn't anything like that. You just, something happened, young children didn't understand, so they decided to pick on you for it. Children, young children like myself, I find things that they don't understand or things that they fear, they express it a lot of times through bullying. I personally, in my own opinion, think that bullies bully due to fear. Bullies will pick on you because you're fat, because you're skinny. Why? Because they're afraid that one day, what if, they like, what if they're like that and people don't accept them? Then what? Now, Mr. Kiyoshi Dean over here was saying that you should go to a parent, which you should, or most importantly, school authority, right? Like your guidance counselor, your assistant principal, your vice principal, anything like that. But what happens if they don't do anything? Because that's what happened in my case. I was getting text messages after text messages from people that obviously didn't like me, wishing bad on me every single day. And when I went to my guidance counselor about it, when I went to my vice principal about it, nothing happened. They brought the kid into the office and said, you're a better man than that, and let him leave. They didn't call his parents, nothing. They just let him leave. There, there was no punishment for what he had said to me. None whatsoever. Thank God that I have a mom like I do. And I have people like Kiyoshi in my life that would do anything to make sure that I'm safe and that I'm okay. Because if I didn't have that, I don't know where I would be. Bullying often gets into people's heads and you start becoming something I like to call a self-bully. You start bullying yourself. Because everything that they say, you start believing it. If somebody tells you every single day that the sky is purple, the sky is purple, you obviously just see that it's blue. But if everybody in your life keeps telling you every single day the sky is purple, you're gonna start believing it. Even though that's evident, the sky is blue. It's like when we hear something on the news. It's like telephone. One person says something, and then it gets altered. And then we start believing it. We start believing what we're hearing. So what do we say? We say it out loud, right? If somebody's telling you that the sky is purple, but the sky is blue, you're gonna believe it. Same thing with bullies. If somebody's telling you every day that you're worthless, that you don't mean anything, you're gonna start believing it. And that's where the problem is. I know back in my mom's time, and she probably doesn't understand me as well, because she grew up in a different time. My mom grew up where you had a few choice words, if it got physical, it got physical, and it ended there. Now, we have the cyber bullying. We have the physical bullying. And what I think is the worst is the emotional bullying, where people come to you and they start saying things. It doesn't necessarily have to be in your face. But what happens? You build a complex. And as you get older, that complex gets worse and worse. You start feeling like everyone's talking about you. And that's where depression comes in. That's where anxiety comes in. And that's why we have so many adults now that people just think, oh, bullying, it's, it's a phase. You'll get over it. You're young. You're a kid. You have time. You realize as you get older, you'll get wiser. 
but things get stuck, they get stuck in your head, they get embedded. And whether we want to believe it or not, that experiences like that affect us. What is the rate of depression and anxiety in adults? Why do we have so much depression and anxiety within teenagers? And a lot of adults don't understand that now. How can you have depression and anxiety? You're only 16. I have my own problems, the same way adults have their own problems. They're third grade. You're what grade? Sixth. Sixth grade. They have their own problems. Schoolwork. Children. These are their problems. And to us, that means a lot. So for us, and I think children, right? You guys would agree with me. We all need our parents. We all need that person sitting next to you guys telling you that it's gonna be okay, right? It's gonna be okay. My grandfather used to tell me, you should not let your heart walk away from you unless your mind grows legs to walk with it. And I never understood what that meant. Ever. I was just like, Grandpa, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Now I understand it. If your mind is not right with yourself or with other people, and you're not able to forget, how are you, able, how are you ever going to be able to trust anybody? How are you going to be able to trust yourself? How are you going to be able to trust instinct? You're not going to be able to trust instinct because you couldn't trust yourself. I think that's about it. Thank you. Very well said. You know, we didn't even have that. It was a great job. Great job. It takes a lot of courage for a young lady to tell you a story. And she gave you some of it. She didn't go into detail. But I saw the transcripts. I saw what that boy said. And I wanted to bring him into my karate studio. You know what I wanted to do, but I didn't. But the school, that was the problem. The school didn't do anything. You're better than this. Better than what? That boy tormented her for months. And I'm grateful she came to me with her mom. And we read these things. I saw the text. And I even told her, we're going to go to the authorities. That's the main reason why you're here today. Because if the authorities can't do anything, then who's going to help you? Again, she has a great support system. I'm very proud of her with this music. This is the first time I heard the other song. And uh, you're going to use my agent. Okay. <laughs> um, so, Deacon Greg Kendra is going to close with some uh, closing remarks. Whatever he wants to speak about. But it's been such a pleasure. I really, really appreciate everybody who came today. And hopefully we'll have another one and have a lot more people. But I keep everybody in my heart here because you're here today. And you're here for a reason. Okay? My information is up there, my business cards in the back. I act as a consultant on the private, on the privacy level. Everything that's said to me stays. Um, I'm gonna just end it with one, uh, one uh, incident that just happened. Uh, a lady called me, I met her about nine months ago, uh, speaking at an event from Long Island. And she said to me, do you consult with adults? And I said, uh, in what way? And she told me. I said, sure. And she started telling me about these things. So this, this lady is around my age, 52. And I was shocked at 52 how people interact with each other. And everything was on cyber, it's all cyber. And she sent me a couple of the texts that she got. She did this, they call it the snap and shot, whatever they call it. I'm not a big technical guy, but I read some of this stuff. And I'm saying, these are adults. I see how kids do it, but these are adults doing this, cyberbullying. And she was hysterical on the phone, she was very emotional. So I'm going to take the case, I'm going to try to help her. And she did go to the authorities, you know what they said? There's nothing threatening here. Because there was a lot of curse words. But there's nothing threatening they're telling us. This is Nassau County. So again, we have to take a stand. That's what they told me too. See, nothing they threatening. Went to the police, they told me it was nothing threatening. That it was just a comment that was made. But if I decided to take self-inflict, it would be my own judgment, not his right. reactions. Right, I remember that. But see, we have to go to our assemblymen our congressmen, they need to pass bills on anti-bullying. That's what they need to pass. 
And it's very hard to pass these bill, bills because, like my senior said at the beginning, the word Boeing, where do you take it? Right? Again, in our day it was a fight. Now we're in 2014, it's called the word Boeing. And I was trying to figure out when this word came around. It's been around a long time, but I've heard it in the last 20 years. Bully, 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 bully. Now, how do we stop it, right? As members of communities. So, I'll end this with, thank you so much, okay? I'm gonna give this mic over to Dean Greg, because we can speak all day here. And I know we all want me to go to lunch or spend time with our families. So, thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Dean, and thank you for raising our awareness about this important issue. As I said, this is a life issue and sometimes a life and death issue. And it's something we all need to keep close to our heart. Just a couple of things I, I wanted to, to mention to, to bring all this to a close. One is the importance of prayer. A number of years ago, I gave a homily on Ash Wednesday, and I was suggesting to people different ways of observing Lent, besides giving up chocolate or television or something like that. And I said to people, pray for your enemies. Pray for your persecutors. Pray for people you don't like. And I suggested rhetorically, I said, when was the last time, this was seven or eight years ago, I said, when was the last time anyone in this church prayed for Osama bin Laden? A thousand people gasped. It was like the idea was completely alien and, and foreign to them. And several people after Mass said, I don't know if I can do that. And I said, well, it's not my idea. It's in the Gospel. Love your enemies and pray for your persecutors. So, as we wrestle with this issue, this issue of bullying and the abuse that can be inflicted upon us and those we love by other people, bring this to your prayer life. Pray for those people who are hurting other people. They need prayers more than you may realize. Secondly, besides praying for your persecutors, remember something that a woman I once worked with said that has always stuck with me. She said, hurt people hurt people. So often those people who are inflicting abuse on someone or bullying someone have pain that we can't begin to comprehend. They have been wounded, they have been damaged. They have been bullied themselves and they are continuing that pattern. We can't often understand what motivate someone to do that. Dean gave some very good examples earlier. But keep that in your mind and heart that these people are acting out something very deep and very painful within themselves and inflicting it on others. And finally, I want to mention something that would seem so obvious. We're going to hear about this in tomorrow's Gospel. When the Pharisees ask Jesus, what are the two most important laws and he says, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. That is so hard for us to wrap our heads around sometimes and to wrap our arms around. The importance of loving our neighbor as ourselves and learning how to forgive our neighbor. And that begins, as I mentioned at the start of all this, with prayer. Keep those who are inflicting this pain on others in your prayers. Pray for all those who are suffering. If it's someone you know, even someone you don't know. Pray for those who are in doing this damage to other people. And be mindful that none of us are completely immune from either being bullies or becoming bullies ourselves. We all have it within ourselves to sin in this way and to hurt others intentionally or even unintentionally. So keep that in your minds and hearts also. And you know, keep in your mind the beautiful prayer of St. Francis of Assisi to make ourselves instruments of peace. And by doing that, by witnessing to that, 
we can carry that peace into the world and give it to others and maybe, please God, ease the pain and stop bullying in its tracks. Thank you again. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. So, a couple of thank yous. Number one, thank you, Our Lady of Mercy, Monsignor, Grill, Sukkar Trevin, Kier. Um, thank you, Mary Ellen Quinn from the Diocese of Brooklyn, Queens. Safe environment, she's here. Uh, if you have any questions, she can speak to you on that level. Thank you to my cameraman, you know, Mario and Tony. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, we get this piece aired. Thank you to my friends over here and everybody else. Any questions? Do we hear for that? Um, I would love to have a group photo if you guys are interested, because we need photos for the Mercy Mirror. So, uh, so if anybody is interested, just come up and take a nice uh, shot, okay? And anybody have any questions? We'll be here for another 20 minutes to answer anything, okay? And uh, what happened? Oh, um, so thank you again. Okay, God bless you. Thank you. You need. No, we take photos. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on, Sue. Because after all, you know, DRE, Sue. Come on, come on, Sue. Come on, Tom, Sue, please. Mary Ellen. Everybody should be in this photo. Come on, stop yapping. Uh, I'm, a bully. I'm bullying you now. I'm bullying you now. <laughs> Tony, you're going to make us laugh so we can smile, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tony's a great photographer. Uh, anybody ever want private work, he does it. I'm talking to him all the He's very good. Ooh, look out. And he will kick chairs. <laughs> Everybody look here, smile. See everybody, perfect, perfect. That person there, can you just step out a little bit this way? I can, I can see you better. Awesome. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Is that paper on the floor for any reason? He's a winner. He's a winner. Pick it up. Hold it, hold it in your hand. Hold it in your hand, a winner. That's fine. Thank you. Nice.